For many of us, when the night comes, the fear comes with it. As we lay our heads down on our pillows, just hoping for a little rest for our weary minds and bodies, often the worries, the fears that we hold at bay throughout the day by numerous distractions come to visit us in the dark. At times like these, the darkness, the silence, the quiet of our bedrooms can be anything but peaceful and restful. Our health worries, our money worries, our insecurities, our failures, they rush in when the light fades. And God bless anyone who has children because whether they are five days old or 50 years old, our worry for their health and their safety is a constant companion, sometimes especially when the night comes. The late advice columnist Ann Landers used to receive something like 10,000 letters a month. When asked what seemed to be the most common topic, she answered, that most people seem to be afraid of something. They're afraid of losing their health and their job and their family. They're afraid of upsetting their neighbor, alienating a friend, committing a social faux pas. Many, she said, are even afraid when there's no reason to be afraid. She commented that ours is a world of fearful people. The first half of our service for this evening is an ancient liturgy intended to help us as darkness falls and the fears rise. The service of Compline can be traced all the way back to St. Benedict in the 6th century. It is perhaps my very favorite service in the entire prayer book. I have prayed it over the years so many times in the silence of my room that I know it by heart. Its beautiful words are intended to center us on God's goodness, on God's compassion, on God's protection. We are reminded that God's love is the source of our strength, and in God we can place our trust. Our help is in, in the name of the Lord we proclaim. Speak to your hearts in silence upon your bed, the psalmist says, and put your trust in the Lord. Because when I do, I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. For you are my refuge and my stronghold my God in whom I put my trust. Such beautiful words that have given me so much strength and comfort for so many years. Too often I think many of us wrongly assume that life won't be good and right until we can eliminate our fears and worries, until we have nothing to fear or worry about. But the truth is, I don't think we ever eliminate them some sort of fear at some point, and lots of worry are part of the human condition. I don't think we can eliminate them, but we can learn not to let them rule our lives. We can learn where to place our trust, and in so doing, how to find our rest. In our gospel for this evening, Jesus is gathered with his disciples for the last time before he is arrested and crucified. He tells them what must happen to him, that the time has come for him to lay down his life, that he must leave them, but they need not be afraid. He will not leave them alone, but he will give them the Holy Spirit to guide and comfort them. This is the same spirit that has been with Jesus since the moment he was baptized. When he is gone, this spirit will be with his disciples and thereby with us 
forever. Therefore he tells them, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Frederick Buechner in his wonderful book called Wishful Thinking, which if you haven't read, you should, he writes that peace has come to mean the time when there aren't any wars or even when there aren't any major wars. Beggars can't be choosers. We'd most of us settle for that. But in Hebrew, peace, shalom, means fullness, means having everything you need to be holy yourself. One of the titles by which Jesus is known is Prince of Peace, and he used the word himself in what seemed at first glance to be two radically contradictory utterances. On one occasion, he said to his disciples, do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. And later on, the last time they ate together, he said to them, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. The contradiction, Buechner says, is resolved when you realize that for Jesus, peace seems to have meant not the absence of struggle, but the presence of love. For Jesus, peace seems to have meant not the absence of struggle, but the presence of love. Not the absence of struggle, but the presence of love. I can't stop my fears from rising in my throat some nights as I turn off the lights and settle into bed. I don't know about you, but I love far too many people not to fear what might happen to them at any given point in time. But I can know that I am not alone in my struggle with fear and worry. We are not alone in our struggles. Our faith doesn't promise us that because we trust in Christ, our lives will be easy or that they will be safe or that the people we love will be safe. Our faith does not save us from the challenges and pain of this life. But our faith does promise us that in the midst of all that we undergo, we are surrounded by and uplifted by a love that flows from the source of all love. Our faith promises us that God never lets us go, that God never lets go of those we love, and therefore we cannot be lost. Because he is bound to me in love, the psalmist says, therefore will I deliver him. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. In essence, I sleep at night not because I am fearless and worry-free, but because I know that the God I trust in Jesus Christ is bigger than my fears and my worries. I sleep because I know that God's loving care surrounds everything and everyone in my life. Recently, I was reading about extreme mountain climbing, and someone made the joke that the reason mountain climbers are tied together is to keep the sane ones from going home. The life of faith can be like that. Doubts set in, worries threaten to swamp us, and the whole notion of believing in God seems crazy. Jesus knew his disciples would have days like this. So he gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he told them that they were tied together like the branches of a vine, like climbers lashed together 
tied to God and to one another by the Spirit. Therefore, they could trust in the one who is always more than we can understand, the one who keeps us moving ahead in the journey of faith, who encourages us when believing seems absurd. I will not leave you orphaned, Jesus promises us. I am coming to you. We too are bound together by that same Holy Spirit. You and I and all the communion of saints are bound together across time in a love that is stronger than anything, even our worst fears even death itself. It's no accident that I know the Compline service by heart. I know it because I've prayed it over and over and over again. I've prayed it because human life is full of fear and worry. But by God's grace, I have learned that God's love is bigger than my fear. That is a truth I know deep in my heart. We live in a broken world. We are wrapped in the arms of a God whose name is love. This broken world will give us plenty to worry about and sometimes a good reason to be afraid. But those loving arms encompass all of it. And so I rest because I know that love will have the last word. Amen.